be uh, be aware. We will send copies to your mother uh, if uh, if that will do us any good. So. Uh, so we have begun recording, and this is the virtual chapter. This is virtual chapter on November 13th, 2018, uh, the second Tuesday of the month, as it were. Uh, and for those of you who are new to us, uh, we are, uh, well, we are officially uh, a chapter of IACT and IMDHA. We also are associated with uh, the International Hypnosis Federation and with the ICBCH. Uh, those Organizations have all endorsed us in such a way that if you are members of them, you're eligible for CEUs simply by spending some time with us here. And you just need to let them know through whatever channel you usually use to notify them of your CEUs uh, that you attended the virtual chapter. I'm also sure that, uh, that CEUs are available from some of the other more collegial hypnosis organizations. So uh, if you belong to one of those, uh, just ask them if you can get credit for this time, and, uh, and I'm sure that they will accommodate you. Uh, Logistic-wise, as I said, we are recording. Uh, well, you know how to get your CEUs, and uh, we would love for you to join us, by the way, if you are not a member of the virtual chapter, which is our Facebook group. We use it, of course, to announce uh, upcoming chapter meetings and things like that, and to uh, also post the replays, the replay of this uh, evening's uh, program will be posted tomorrow round about noontime. Uh, that's certainly what I aim for. And it will also be posted on the IACT IMDHA forum. For those of you who are members of that group, you can log into the uh, Mind Matters forum and uh, you'll be able to find it there. So, uh, and uh, the virtual chapter also has its own uh, uh, YouTube channel. So you can go to virtual chapter YouTube channel as well and uh, find the replay of this and of all of our previous meetings. So please do that. So here we are in November. Uh, it is, uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge that, uh, what, Veterans Day in the last week or uh, Armistice Day. Uh, and uh, so all of our uh, soldiers uh, and those who have served in the wars and in between the wars and have served us in the many ways uh, that our armed forces do, uh, we thank you and we honor you and appreciate your sacrifice uh, on our behalf, thank you for your service. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the uh, incredible fires in California. First of all, the shooting in Thousand Oaks, and then the fire there, and the fire particularly up in Paradise. Um, I'm uh, feeling the absence of Karen right now. I'm really wanting to, uh, to get her on here to hear about this because her daughter lives in Paradise and was among the people that were evacuated out of there. Michael. And, uh, Hello, Michael. Oh, there she I is. Here. You're here. Welcome. So Thank tell you. us. So, so tell I'm us. Sorry, I got I got here late. My alarm went off incorrectly. I had it set for uh, it. Well, never mind. <laughs> I'm here now, and I've been here for a while. So yes, my daughter has been driven down to Santa Cruz. Uh, she lives up in Chico, California, and was um, her house. Her neighborhood was evacuated, and she could see the flames across the highway from. Uh, her front door. So she is all the way down as far as Santa, Santa Cruz at this point. Um, and hasn't been home in five days, I guess. But her house is still standing. She just hasn't been, and the smoke has been so bad, she hasn't been able to get back to it. Okay. But her, her property is okay as far as she knows. And she is. As far as we know. Great. As all right. Well, thank knock you. Wood and, knock wood and wish her well on behalf of all of us. Yeah. I will do that. Thank you. She'll appreciate that. Uh, also, just among the announcements, uh, the virtual chapter, as you know, uh, we are going to be speaking with Mark Andreas in just a little while, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, and then a month from just a little while from now, uh, we're going to be speaking with Sean Michael Andrews, who I believe is on the call as well. And uh, he's going to be talking to us about uh, some of the lovely things that he does with uh, street hypnosis and stage hypnosis and how those, uh, those things can be incorporated into uh, clinical practice as well and how he, how he blends the things together. And uh, we're certainly interested in hearing about that. And then, so that will be our December meeting. And our January meeting, we're going to have Sean Carson. And Sean did this lovely thing at, um, at the Chicago, uh, the Mid-America Conference in Chicago, <clears throat> where he talked about the tarot um, as a tool, uh, the tarot cards, the tarot deck as a tool in coaching. And I've got to tell you, and fittingly, of course, for a hypnosis convention, I was mesmerized. 
<laughs> so, so uh, uh, it was it, it, honestly, it was one of the most impressive things that I have seen in a long, long while. So, um, so I asked him if he would be our guest for the January meeting, and uh, he will be presenting that same material here then. So, uh, look it's forward so to that. exciting. I actually have a study group <laughs> of other women, a couple of other women who are hypnotists and interested in tarot that were seeing how to apply this into a clinical hypnosis. So it's quite fascinating. I can't wait till Sean shares it with all of us. Yeah, so. you, you take the card, you ask the person to look at it, and then you swing it back and forth ever yes, so okay. slowly. Or you put them each on chains. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it will be a very lovely thing, though. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. And, and of course, I'm looking forward to Sean Michael and certainly looking forward to, uh, to talking with Mark tonight. We are so fortunate in the virtual chapter to not have that uh, uh, the, the thing that I think so many chapters have to deal with, and that is uh, we can only get guests or they can only get guests from their local area. Uh, the lovely thing about the internet is that our local area is global, and, uh, and so uh, we're fortunate to be able to connect with so many great people and, uh, and hopefully you know, bring, them, bring them to you all uh, in a way that, uh, uh, that contributes to, uh, to the work that we do in hypnosis. So uh, there's, our, there's our schedule. There are just a couple other announcements, things coming up that I want to tell you about. I have a very, very, very special announcement because it hasn't been spoken anywhere before now. Uh, and that is uh, the weekend of February 2nd and 3rd, just in time for that groundhog to look up out of the hole and figure out whether we're going to have winter or still for a while longer or what the deal is going to be. Uh, is the weekend that IACT and IMDHA are going to be sponsoring yet again uh, the Galaxy of the Stars. Now, some of you might be familiar with the Galaxy of the Stars. It was a deal when these two organizations merged that uh, Ann Spencer and the uh, Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association used to run regularly. I mean, they had a conference. So in order to kind of accommodate, uh, accommodate the two groups in two different locations, um, the autos uh, did the... Uh, uh, the Daytona conference that, uh, that we're also familiar with. And in addition, they ran the Galaxy of Stars in Detroit. And I believe that they ran it in Los Angeles a couple of times as well. And the deal with the Galaxy of the Stars is it's four presenters over the span of two days, just four presenters. Uh, and uh, what I had proposed to them, we're doing this on, oh, I didn't say this yet. We're doing this online. We're doing this in the safety and security and comfort of your very own home. Uh, and you know it hadn't been done for a bunch of years; it had just fallen out of use. And I said, "Why don't we do? Why don't we do a Galaxy of Stars again and do it online, and do it about what I've been referring to as the Big Four? I think, in terms of the bread and butter for most hypnotherapists, uh, smoking and weight loss and pain management and handling stress and anxiety cover a, a multitude of uh, of things. So what we've got is four presenters, each doing a half a day." Uh, on their topic. I can't announce their names just yet because uh, the ink isn't dry, you know, and all of that stuff, but uh, you will hear about it really shortly. Uh, the whole deal is going to be uh, $99 if you register early enough uh, and $129 if you drag your feet to the last minute. So please drag your feet until the last <laughs> minute and uh, the organization will benefit even further. So <laughs> so we hope that you will attend. It's going to it's gonna be a lovely thing and uh, and hopefully something new that we can that we can revive through this electronic medium uh, that has sort of fallen off the uh, off the map otherwise. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. And also in February, Karen, tell them tell them about Las Vegas. Uh, yes, February, um, the Winter HPTI Winter Conference is coming up February. 27th, 28th, 29th, 25th, 26th, 27th. Michael, do you have the dates in front of you? Um, no, but something weekend. like that. Uh, that some mid twenties, right. and it's a weekend. <laughs> yes, and there is a virtual conference coming up as well in January, and I don't have those dates in front of me either because I didn't realize we'd be talking about that. Ah. But I will, up, I will look them up and have them by the time that we're over. A virtual conference coming up, um, really related with uh, doing the business of hypnosis. Uh, you can do that from the comfort of your own home, and then. We get together in person in Vegas at the Orleans Hotel for uh, the Winter HPTI conference, and I'll have those dates for you too. And Karen's going to be presenting at that Winter conference in uh, in uh, 
in February at, in Las Vegas, and I'm yes. going to be presenting at that uh, conference in February in Las Vegas. And, uh, and then, uh, also, by the way, for those of you who have an interest in core transformation, uh, the, uh, the ink is not dry on this one either, but I believe that it's going to be February 9th and 10th that uh, uh, that weekend will be core transformation here in Orlando. So if you want to get away to Florida, look at the beautiful scenery behind me. Uh, wow. You know, and if that appeals to your core, then uh, then be sure and uh, come to uh, to Florida uh, and uh, for core transformation. Because uh, and just just contact me if you want to know more about that later on. So enough of the commercials. Um, I do want to tell you and uh, that that this uh, obviously I act an IMDHA uh, organization here, uh, being our primary sponsor, and they are gearing up towards the Hypno Expo 2019. Uh, which, by the way, Karen, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know exactly what the dates are either. Uh, <laughs> it's the, uh, I think it's the third weekend in May. Um, so, I can get uh, that one quickly. Okay. And, um, and again, Karen and I will both that be... That 17th, 18th, and 19th. And isn't there a big announcement, or have you already made that? Did I miss that? About... Um, a particular speaker at the IACT INDHA Expo. Well, actually, uh, Cheryl mentioned it uh, to a few people uh, before before we uh, before we went up the okay. online. But but yeah, I've been asked to give the uh, keynote address at uh, the IACT IMDHA conference, and I am truly uh, honored and uh, and uh, and uh, delighted to uh, to be able to do that. So and again, those dates are the seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth of May. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know if Karen knows this yet. I think I told her about it, but uh, but you may not have received a notification because at that conference in May, uh, I'm doing a post-conference, uh, which is the virtual hypnotist, and it's the stuff that I do in my online class to teach people how to do hypnosis online. But um, during the conference, uh, Karen Hand and I are doing a one-hour program for people that have just uh, thought about, I wonder if it makes any sense to do anything online or have objections or concerns or considerations, uh, we're going to do a one hour together about the ins and outs of working online and uh, basically the general stuff that's, uh, that's involved with that. Um, my practice at this particular point is probably 90% online uh, and, uh, and thank God for the internet. Uh, and by the way, it's brought us all together here. Thank God for Michael teaching me how to do it because about over 50% of my practice is now online, training and seeing clients. So uh, it's a wonderful thing. And do you have something else on the schedule for HypnoThought for, for the expo, Karen? Uh, I do. I have uh, another one hour that I don't have in front of me right now. I believe it is um, goal affirmation. It's the goal affirmation technique. And uh, I will be doing a workshop on Friday, all day Friday, on the reminding yourself system, the reminding system, uh, how a, a complete uh, system on how to go from uh, start to finish with a client to get them to their goal and several different techniques, at least six two, uh, new techniques that I'll share with you that day. All right. Well, lovely. So, uh, Anything left, Karen? Or without further ado, shall we? No, I'm really anxious to get to Mark. <laughs> I am too. I am too. I yeah. heard, I've heard enough out of you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I am anxious to get to Mark too. And uh, Mark, I want to I, I, I want to introduce Mark Andreas. And, and I'm not going to give you all this formal proper introduction and uh, what years he did what. Uh, Mark, I just want to let everybody know I've known you forever. <laughs> and I and I think that that is so cool because um, I was trained in NLP by Mark's parents and uh, and the then NLP Colorado uh, training team, and uh, and Mark was a toddler at the time, so it's just really a, a, a wonderful thing to to, uh, uh, to 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 know you now uh, to have come to know you again over the last several years, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, delighted to have you be on here with us tonight. Mark is the author of, uh, of a couple of lovely books, particularly one called Sweet Fruit from Bitter Tree. Uh, I have said that right, right? You I was worried. I was going to say bitter tree, free, sweet, bitter fruit from the sweet tree. Uh, so sweet fruit from the bitter tree. And uh, Dancing with Wolverines, which is about uh, the work. Waltzing with Wolverines. Waltzing, I'm sorry, yeah. Waltzing with Wolverines. Uh, thanks for the correction. The work that he did with uh, 
the kids and stuff. And uh, this is a, a lovely thing. So, so great books, great material, and a number of other things. Obviously, it does. It certainly doesn't stop there. Uh, he's a popular speaker and presenter. He is, uh, as uh, some of you may have noticed if you were online before, and he introduced his wife. He is uh, a newlywed, uh, at least within the last uh, what year? Uh, the last year, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so congratulations once again, newlywed. Thank you. And uh, and we have sort of two sort of things about about having you on here. But first, let me just let me just welcome you and uh, and let you say hi. Yeah, thanks. I'm delighted to be here, and it's always a pleasure um, being hosted by Michael and you too, Karen, and and hey. seeing a lot of familiar faces. Hey, Pedro and Kathy, good to see you too, and everyone else um, who I also already said hi to or or am saying hi to now, um, and. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mark. You can find out all about me on my website. No need to waste time here. What is your website exactly? It's markandreas.com. Markandreas.com. Uh, and, and, uh, and that's very similar to your name, isn't it? It is very similar to my name. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange coincidence, actually. That's lovely. That'll, that'll make it easy to remember. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, that'll make it easy to remember, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> markandreas.com so yeah check out his website there's some great stuff there so so we have a couple of missions here in our in our time together with you mark tonight one of them is uh i know i i mentioned to this uh this to you when i when i first contacted you is uh mark's father steve uh passed away on the 7th of september this year uh he has uh, uh been such an incredible contributor uh to my life and experience and to so many people that I thought it was really uh, appropriate that uh, that we take some time to honor and to and to remember him, and uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about your dad, uh, and then uh, uh, he also did a your your dad did quite a bit of work in this area of self concept, and uh, and ultimately we're going to sort of turn uh, turn Mark loose uh, with you all to uh, share some things about self-concept and, uh, and perhaps uh, to share a process or something with you uh, as well this evening. So yeah. I'll tell you where I'd like to start. First of all, you are, you are the son of, uh, of some unusual parents. And, and I know it's, it's kind of a funny thing because uh, forests and trees, you know, and all of that sort of stuff, um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but looking from the outside, uh, your parents uh, both have, have meant a great deal to me. Um, and, uh, and in particular, one of the things that I want to tell you that I, I don't think that I've ever mentioned, and uh, this isn't so much about your dad, this is about your mother. <clears throat> I owe your mother uh, a debt of, an incredible debt of gratitude for giving me pictures. And you have told me. I did tell you, good, yeah, yeah. and, and, and uh, it really is true for me. Uh, I, was, uh, I was in an NLP practitioner training, and uh, uh, Connie Ray was, uh, was training that particular day. And we were doing the swish pattern, which was a brand new thing. Uh, <laughs> and in its presentation, it uh, you know it required all this visual manipulation, and I was getting very very frustrated because I'm one of those guys that uh, a lot of hypnotists uh, say that they have for clients, uh, who tell them that they can't see anything and that they don't have any pictures and they don't visualize anything. <clears throat> Historically, I was one of those guys, is what I should say. And. Uh, so I got frustrated in the process, and I remember I remember calling her over. I said, "Connie Ray, this you know this is just really frustrating me because I can't see anything." And she said, "She said that's all right, Michael. Just imagine that you can." And and I swear, I swear to God, something absolutely changed in my life that day. That uh, I mean, I have, I have rich, vivid pictures, uh, you know, constantly, continually. Uh, I I I think I literally became if there is such a thing, uh, but became officially a visual processor uh, as soon as I recognized that it was a possibility. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and it's, and it's stayed with me and, and literally enriched my life. So uh, uh, to this, to this very day, I can't imagine, I can't imagine not having that uh, any longer. And I certainly can't imagine doing the work, you know, the work that I do without that. And, uh, and it was just a well-placed word at the right time you know, by a lady who seemed to know what I needed to hear. So, uh, <laughs> so I just want to acknowledge, acknowledge that. Uh, <clears throat> but then 
your dad, the, the thing, the, the, the one thing about your father that has always been amazing to me is that we, we look at this field called neurolinguistic programming as being a field that has something to do with uh, psychology and therapy and, uh, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. At least that's how it tends to be applied and utilized, you know, by so many of us, particularly in this community. <clears throat> and yet, uh, as I survey the, uh, the personnel uh, in the development of NLP, uh, the man that really stands out as being the most uniquely qualified uh, is your dad. Uh, and, uh, and your dad, through his experiences with, uh, particularly with Fritz Perls, and uh, uh, for anybody that's listening that isn't aware of that, uh, under the name John O. Stevens, uh, your dad wrote the book Gestalt Therapy Verbatim, uh, which are the transcripts of uh, Fritz working with clients and, and the, the classic text in Gestalt Therapy as well as a brilliant book called um, uh, Awareness, which is a collection of exercises and things that assist people in sort of integrating these notions that are behind, uh, behind this therapeutic process. And, and it was so uh, amazing to me because it's that set of skills <clears throat> that allowed him then to transcribe Bandler and Grinder uh, and bring them to the world because the books that they were writing on their own were just not really accessible to anybody. Uh, so to bring them to the world in that way and to uh, and also to develop training and training protocols in NLP to help people really kind of grok the, uh, the substance of this uh, new emerging technology. So uh, and I'll just add that as far as the, the transcripts of Bandler and Grinder, that was both of my parents. And actually, a lot of that was my mom hmm. in, in writing up and editing those transcripts. Yeah. Yeah, I know. In fact, I, I, I actually saw an interview with your dad earlier today, and he was acknowledging that your mom had done most of the work on transformations, I believe. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, uh, this is this incredible contribution. So you're this kid that comes out into the world, just like all of us do, uh, in the middle of what at least seems to us from the outside to be a rather uh, enlightened atmosphere. And my sense is that uh, uh, what it means to, to be growing up an Andreas uh, during the developmental years of NLP has really got me curious. So I'm just wide open for whatever it is that you want to tell us about that. Sure, yeah. Well. Um, maybe I'll just start by, and I'm wide open too, by the way, for, for you and for everyone. Um, I, what I told Michael before this meeting is, is there's nothing off the table. If people want to know about my experience with my dad or his passing or, or just anything in his, um, like transition time or just anything about him at all. And my, my experience with him, I'm happy to answer any questions or, or talk about anything you're curious about. Um, whatever is most useful to to you all is is uh, most important to me. Um, and then obviously the self concept work I'm excited to share with you too because that's something that he uh, he was really excited about, found really valuable. And you know he would kind of he was a, a kind of an inventor in a in a sense. You know he would explore and, and create new models and then he would be excited to get on to the next thing and so the self-concept work is something that um you know once he moved on to the next thing nobody really took it on and, and taught it so it's kind of a, a hidden um gem i think in a lot of ways and there's one person teaching it now damon cart uh, of nlp gym mm -hmm. um but other than that basically no one's doing it so I'm excited to share that with you, and um, but anyways, we'll get to that in a moment. So yeah, I'm really as far as, as as far as getting back to your your question about just kind of growing up in that in in the family, um, my experience was you know sometimes I like to to some people ask the question, what was it like having your parents do NLP on you all the time? <laughs> and, um, so. Uh, and I, and I, so usually my first response is, well, how would you like to be NLP'd all over? Um, but, but, it, but I think it's an interesting dynamic and one of the, the 
things that my parents really put a lot of work into was translating NLP from kind of a manipulative model or a, a model of sort of domination. I'm going to influence you. I'm going to do NLP on you to something that is a, a way, a, something that you do with people. And that was very much my experience growing up uh, in my family was that there, these tools and communication tools were always used in a way that was with us and, um, you know, there to support everybody's needs getting met in, in the best way that, that we could find. At least that was the ideal. Didn't always happen in my family either, but. <laughs> but. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you if, I can, if I can just add it in, Mark, is that, is that one of the things that I'm aware of uh, that, that sets your parents apart from other NLP trainers that, that I've known uh, is that I've never seen anybody pay quite so much attention uh, to the issue of ecology. Yeah. Uh, and, and it really, it really makes the difference in terms of their, uh, of their deep commitment to be able to do a, a thorough, thoughtful and, and safe, uh, you know, a piece of work with people. Yeah, and, and so I, I I assume that that's reflected in, in what you're in what you're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know if um, if we want to open things up to people who just have questions about my dad and his passing, or or if you don't care about that and you just want to learn about the process, or. Um, well, how about this? If you if you could just tell us, uh, as long as you're you're mentioning this particular subject, one of the one of the things too is that uh, uh, you know your dad your dad really uh, put out the uh, uh, the grief process, for example, it's in the heart of the mind and things yeah. like that. You know, he really had a sensitivity to these kinds of issues of grief and loss, and so uh, I can't help but be curious in terms of uh, in terms of your dad's passing and how it is that he. Uh, transitioned uh you know through that through that process what 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 can you tell us about that yeah so in terms of like how he trans made the trend like or how it is that he experience or, or my experience or maybe how it is that he prepared or prepared himself or prepared people around him or or what what is there what is there to for for us to know from that story that uh, yeah know? yeah well one thing um about a year ago now, I think it was in October, or it might have been in November, um, he started, his health started declining majorly. And he, so he sent us all an email. Um, I think I might have shared part of that on a blog, actually. Uh, so you can read, I wrote a blog about, about his passing too. So if you're interested to find a little bit more, um, you can go to my blog on my website. Um, but he sent us kind of the immediate family an email just kind of giving us an update on his health and saying, you know, I don't think I'm going to be around. He, at that point, he didn't think he was going to live longer than a month. Hmm. And so he basically shared some appreciations and, and said, you know, I don't know that there's a whole lot unsaid between us, but if there is, go for it. <laughs> like, um, I urge you to, you know, if there's any unfinished business or anything you want to be sure to say to me to do it, uh, do it now. And so that was, I think, really helpful. Um, and I don't even know um, that there was a whole lot of unsaid, but it was, you know, sometimes it's good to say it again. <laughs> sure. um, and so uh, then, then he, he got some improvements and, and was doing a lot better, still, still really declining, but then it was, it was more like, okay, maybe sometime in the next year is kind of what, what he was thinking and what ended up happening. So we definitely had plenty of time to, I mean, obviously we all wanted him to stick around for a lot longer, but we had enough time to really say our goodbyes and connect and, um, very grateful for that. Yeah. It would have been a lot harder if if uh, it had just happened suddenly. It would have been a lot more to adjust to. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, th thanks for that, Mark. You know, one of the one of the things before we, uh, uh, I want to I want to segue from this into the uh, into the self concept work, but I can't I can't uh, really talk about your dad and his work without uh, also acknowledging the the tremendous work that he that he did with uh, <coughs> with PTSD <coughs> and uh, you know and all the stuff that's going on with that. Can you can you yeah. kind of let Fill people in about where that what's happened with that project or or what's yeah I'll just give you a really really brief update um, the and you can find more at the research and recognition it's I think rnr.org um, Frank Burke and others Richard Gray are ha, have done several I think four now significant um, like really well researched uh, programs for the Fast, the NLP fast phobia cure, or some people know it as the movie theater process, and they call it the RTM process. Um, and so my dad worked in really closely with them in developing the, the basic process that they were gonna then, that they then researched and have gotten fabulous um, results. I think the, the four different studies, it's somewhere in the range of, of 94 to 97 percent success rate with with war veterans for PTSD so really incredible results and um, you know a variety of different methods for assessing before and after and so they're wanting to get this ex accepted and out there and widely available to vets and and uh, what an appropriate day to be talking about that so thanks for or asking about that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the, um, they just did a training. Uh, so, so when the re research was really successful, they just now completed a training this fall with um, uh, several master le master's level uh, people, um, psychotherapists to uh, create a, basically test a model of teaching other teaching practitioners how to use this just as effectively as, as it was used in the research. And the next stage is going to be looking at getting, uh, getting training that's high level and getting certification uh, available and so that this kind of training can get out to um, all the different people that are working with veterans and PTSD. So it's, uh, you can check it out on, on the rnr.org website. Lovely. It's exciting, <coughs> exciting work. Yeah. All right. So it continues on then, and uh, and we'll we'll be looking for to hear even more about it because these, so these studies these these are actually one one of the things that I think we have so much uh, so much trouble with in our field is people are saying you know where are where are your studies where are your studies uh, yeah. here's somebody actually doing doing some real work in a in a way that. Uh, that will be recognizable by folks that are looking for <laughs> looking for studies. So yeah, yeah. Thank thank goodness for that. Yeah. yeah, Frank's been working hard on it since for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. I think maybe two thousand and eight or something. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. Okay. So and and then of course there is uh, there is the self concept work that we're that we're coming up to in a minute. And I just want to let you know, Mark, that uh, for now. Um, we were kind of open-ended in terms of how this might happen in terms of the possibility of you doing a group process or mm -hmm. working with somebody and doing a demo or anything. Any of those things as it, as it evolves, any of those things is appropriate. All you need to do is to let me know what it is that you want and I can make arrangements to get somebody on the screen for you or, or, or manage right. the software to do what, what needs to be done. So, uh, right, sounds good. I think I'll start with a group guided experience after a little introduction and then we can go from there and just see what makes sense. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. it's all it's all yours, buddy. Great, great. So um, of course this is gonna be a tiny taste of what's of, of the full this full process. And it's in a book that looks like this. Um, you can get it on Amazon, Transforming Yourself. Rory's <laughs> got one already. <laughs> um, and goes into the full, this is a, uh, my father did this as a, I think it was a three-day training. Um, and the book goes into, it's just in great detail and, and, 
and um, going step by step through the training. It's a similar similar format of using some transcript from the train training and basically um, guiding you through the the training in book form. Um, and it's also available online the the three day training, um, which I can give a link to at the end. But basically, this the so self it's all about uh, changing our beliefs or um, creating new beliefs about ourselves. And most people are excited about the idea of belief change and processes that can work for changing beliefs. And this is about specifically the beliefs about ourselves, about changing beliefs about ourselves or creating new beliefs that will be resourceful about ourselves. And so self-esteem is something that most people agree is a good thing and that we should have more of it. And there's a lot of people talking about self-esteem and, you know, and, and advising that people should go out and get more of it. And, and um, however, there's a lot of times in, uh, w when you hear people talk about self-esteem, uh, everyone agrees it's a good thing and that we sh it would be good to have more of it. But a lot of people don't have very specific instructions for how to actually do that. How do we actually get more self-esteem? And so that's a lot of that's at the heart of what we're gonna what I'm gonna be introducing today and the the full transforming yourself model. Um, and basically, the self-esteem. So a lot of people try to go for it directly because we agree that it's a good thing to have. And so they try to go directly for let's, let's get more of this self-esteem stuff. Um, and that usually doesn't actually really work very well. But what we can do is make changes that naturally result in, in higher self-esteem. So what self-esteem naturally results from is when I have my beliefs and values in alignment with who I actually am. I'm oh, sorry, my, forget about the beliefs part. When my values are in alignment with who I am, then I just naturally have self-esteem. So that's a lot easier way of going about it than to try and go directly for self-esteem. So if, I, if, if my self-concept, who I believe myself to be is somebody that is different from my, what I value, from my values, that's going to lead to low self-esteem if those aren't matching up. And so for the purposes of today, most people have a pretty clear sense of what their values are. There might be certain areas where we might not be exactly sure, that kind of thing. But mostly, we are pretty well aware of the things that fulfill us, the things that make, make us happy. Um, and what we value in life, in, in a word. And often, when we think about who we are, that may line up in a lot of areas, but there might be certain areas where, um, where there's conflict, where, where, gosh, I don't think I'm really being the person that, that's in alignment with what I value in life. Um, and so this process can, can be really valuable for transforming those, those qualities of ourselves that aren't in alignment with our values into qualities that actually are in alignment with our values. And when we do that, then self-esteem is just a natural result. We don't even have to work for it, which is a pretty wonderful thing. And so be beliefs are a powerful thing, which I think is why so many people are you know, it's interesting, I've been to a lot of different trainings and whenever somebody mentions belief change, like the whole room kind of like pays more attention, like, ooh, belief change, we're gonna do belief change now. Um, I don't believe it can be done, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can, we'll, we'll check in with you at the end of today. <laughs> actually, the first presentation that I saw Michael uh, do was a beautiful demonstration of the walking belief change process. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, I just, I just, I'll never forget that presentation. It was really, really wonderful. Cool, thank you. Um, so, so beliefs are, people kind of have this sense that beliefs are a powerful thing. And it's, yeah, everyone's heard of self-fulfilling prophecies. And 
you know, that can be a positive thing if, if we like what's being fulfilled, but it can also be a negative thing. Um, I just story popped into my mind of the, you know, some, somebody said there's, you know, there's weather coming in and somebody warns of a, a toilet paper crisis. And so then everybody goes and buys up all the toilet paper and now there actually is one. Um, <laughs> so, um, so beliefs can be self-fulfilling. And they're not always, it's not always a good thing how they're, how they're fulfilled, depending on the, the belief. But if we have a belief about the world, like the world is a nasty place or, you know, something like that, that's something that we can escape. We can go someplace, find an ashram somewhere or a sanctuary or something like that. And there is something that we can do to escape that sort of belief, even if it's not a very resourceful belief to have. But when, when we have a negative belief about ourselves, that's something that is with us no matter where we go. And if that's a negative belief, then that can be a really damaging thing across contexts in our life. Um, on the flip side, if this is a positive belief, it can have that much more benefit and impact. And so doing this kind of identity level belief change and getting more in alignment of becoming the person that is in alignment with my values uh, is something that can be a really powerful thing and a really generative thing. Um, and I've been using this process more in the last couple of years with clients and found that to be the case in working with somebody, even if we work with a particular quality, off, this is the kind of thing that often clients will come back and say, like, whoa, what happened? I, you know, I've been like, going out and socializing and just dancing and just have this energy and excitement and all of these ripple out effects that I never even expected would happen. And that's the kind of thing that can, can happen with uh, these self-fulfilling prophecies when they work for us in a good way. So I want to just, before I say anything more, give you uh, just a, a, a group experience to begin to have your own experience of some aspect of your self-concept. And we're not gonna have time today to get into how, to, how in this model we transform from a negative self-concept into a positive one, but it is all there. And depending on timing, we might have time for a few questions um, afterwards, but I'll get to intro the beginning of, of this so you can have a sense of how this self-concept stuff works and how we can start playing with it and adjusting it so that it aligns more fully with our values and leads more to natural self-esteem. All right. So, so the first thing I'd invite you to do is let's explore some quality of your self-concept that you already like, some, some quality of yourself that you already know is true and that you like. So I invite you all to just think of something right now, some quality of yourself, that if somebody walked up to you on the street and said, hey, do you have this quality? You would just say, oh, absolutely. I have that. Some quality that you like and that you know is true of yourself. So it might be kindness, it might be humor, it might be, um, I'm good at sports, it could be anything. So, and then just maybe by sh raise your hand when you have something. Nobody has to share anything, but just so I get a sense of where everybody is. Okay, great. So now I invite you to, you can, you can close your eyes if that helps you attend to your inner experience a little bit more, or you can do this with your eyes open. And now, how do you know this? How do you know it's true? This is something that you know is true about yourself. So how do you actually know? And for some of you, well, I'm curious actually, before I lead the witness in any way, <laughs> um, 
I might be doing more of that than I would with somebody individually just because it's a group, but would anyone like to share how it is that you know? Everybody's mics are muted, but, but feel yeah. free to open oh, up. Why don't you unmute and share. Uh, yeah, Scott. Um, because I was in college at 11. That's okay. how I know that I have intelligence. Okay, great. So intelligence. And, you're in, and so um, when you think about that memory of being in college at 11, where do you, where do you see this memory as you think about it now? How do you experience it? Um, just, uh, it's a visual memory of being at University of Hawaii, Manoa. Okay, great. And thank you. Anyone else like to share how you know? Uh, yeah, Catherine. Kathy. And if you would unmute your microphone first, then, we'll hear, then we can hear you. There we go. I would say I, the quality is compassion, and I've experienced it in dreams, especially. Mm -hmm. A dream of Gandhi, a dream of my father who had passed away, very powerful dreams where I had a full experience of compassion. Okay, interesting. So, so you have examples of in dreams, and do you have an, examples of in your own life as well? Yeah, I think I'm very empathic, and I, by, I am by nature a compassionate person, or at least I am now. You know, those experiences happened some years ago, but increasingly, yes, I would say. Okay, great. And when you think about those experiences now, where do you see them, or where, how do you experience them? In my memories, I, I have a very strong happy, you know, recognition that this is, um, this is a very positive feeling. Do you mm -hmm. mean like that? So there's a positive feeling aspect to it too. Yeah, so. definitely. And a visual. And a visual. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that it's somewhere out here. She gestured and is where, where she's seeing that visual. It's great. Thank you. You're welcome. So for, for everyone else, you can just notice your own experience of how it is that you know this. You, you, it's something that you certainly know. There's no question there. So how do you know it? So you, you have to be accessing some experience of this. So you can just close your eyes and notice for yourself how it is you know you have this quality. And maybe, uh, like Kathy, that there's some element of some visual out in front and feeling that goes with it. Mm -hmm. um, Scott also had a, a visual. We didn't ask where he saw that, but somewhere he saw that image of him in college at a young age. So for you, it may also be more auditory. So, you know, for often for people it's visual, but it may be a voice in your ear or somebody saying something to you that lets you know that you have this quality. And for, for a lot of people, there's kind of an initial summary image. Like for Scott, there is this clear example of at college at 11. And yet I'm sure he has many other examples that also are in this category of intelligence. And so, Scott, you can just notice how are you aware of all of the other examples as well. And the rest of you, you can notice for yourselves, when you think about this quality, how do you know it's not just an isolated incident? How, do you, how are you in touch with the full range of data that says, yeah, this is a quality of who I am across time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in a lot of different situations. And so for some people, that's like a cloud of images <laughs> in front or to one side or the other, or maybe, like a sort of like a Rolodex of one after the other flipping through. It might be like a long line going one direction or the other. And there's lots of different ways that we can organize our inner experience of the, these qualities that we know 
yeah, this is, this is who I am. This is part of who I am. And I want you to just notice how, you, how you're organizing, particularly in terms of space. Where are these, if it's images, where are they located in space and how are they located? Are they, do you see them all at once in a big cluster or is it more simultaneous? If it's auditory, where are you hearing? From, is it coming from the right side or the left side or inside somewhere? And I invite you to memorize this structure, whatever it is for you, the structure of where and how you see or hear this data that shows clearly that this is a quality of you, of who you are. And I want you to memorize this because this is something that you can use later. We won't have time in this call, but when you memorize this structure, this is basically your unconscious's way of organizing a positive quality of yourself. And so it's kind of like just when, uh, you know, if I have a file folder of Manila files um, in my desk, and I can pull out that file cabinet and look at the tabs and see that I have a lot of information on a certain topic. And I don't even necessarily need to dive in and open up the folder and look through all of the different um, papers in there to know that that's, that that's there, that that category exists. And so the same thing is operating in this way for our senses of ourself that this is how our unconscious mind has organized this quality and has access to this quality. And it's a really good thing to have this kind of organization because it means that we can create new files of new qualities that we want to have in exactly the same orientation and we know that it'll work. We know that that'll be something then that our unconscious can easily access and go, yeah, I have that. And we don't even necessarily, now we could go through and look through the whole file, but in order to know that that's a quality of ourselves, all we have to do is create the file and in the right format and put it there. And our unconscious will know that it's there and know that we can access it anytime in more detail if, if that's important. So just to give a, a, a short example of a client that I was working with recently, um, his positive template was, uh, and that's sort of the, what I refer to this, however you're experiencing this quality, I'm gonna refer to that as the positive template. So this is how your unconscious organizes a positive quality and goes, yeah, that's me, I know that's me. So for him, it was a whole bunch of images of the quality that sort of wrapped around to the right. And um, yeah, so around front, sort of right front to, to his side on the right. And it was just a whole bunch of images in kind of a collage of this positive quality. And then he could even step in if he wanted to and step in and associate with any of them and get an even more full experience of the particular situation. So that was his positive template. And then once we know that, once we know that basic structure, now we can really play and have a lot of fun in creating some other new quality that he doesn't experience yet, but that he would like to have, that would be in alignment with his values. And so then it's kind of like, um, if you imagine all of your memories were completely unorganized, there would be no way of knowing anything about who we are. Like, let's say all of your memories were just photographs that were just piled in a barn somewhere. And somebody came up to you and said, hey, are you a kind person? Um, you'd have to go, well, let me go to the barn and spend three days sorting through everything and, and, and then I'll get back to you and let you know. Um, 
so but if we have those some of those experiences filed away in the way that we can access them easily then that's how we can have that instant answer yeah that's absolutely a quality of mind without even knowing at first how we know this so once we have the positive template like that now you can explore on your own um, what it would be like to let's say uh, let's say humor is something you'd like to have that would be in alignment with your values but you feel like you don't have as much of it as you would like now you can take some time to think back through all of your life experiences to all of those moments where you had humor as a quality and start building a new category of this quality for yourself and put it in the same template. So for my client, it would be wrapping around to the right. Um, for Kathy, it would be creating images out in front here or whatever your um, positive template is of how you represent a positive quality. So this is just a basic thing to play with. Now, um, any questions on this so far? And this is basically about all we'll do. Um, but just any questions on this basic thing to, to play with? And then I want to make a few more comments about how to do this in an ecological way. And of course, everybody remember, you can, you can unmute your microphone if you have a question. Uh, and uh... Yeah, just go ahead and unmute and, and ask your question if you have one. And if you don't know how to do that, by the way, just in case, it's uh, probably down to the bottom left of your screen. You'll see a little microphone that has a, uh, a red circle around it and a line through it. Uh, if you just click on it, that'll open it up again. Does everyone feel like they have <laughs> a, that what I just said made sense to where you can uh, experiment with it on your own? <laughs> Okay, awesome. So I just want to say one other thing. Well, I want to be sure to say one thing, which is, which is really important because uh, when you're exploring this on your own, um, I encourage you, well, I, I, I think it's very important actually that you do this to start with, with a quality that you feel ambiguous about. So don't start with a quality that you actually have the opposite of. So let's say um, I want to be, I want to build a self-concept of being kind, but I think of myself as cruel. Um, that would not be a place to start because there's already a self-concept in there that's negative. So if I just build a self-concept that's positive, now I'm going to be bipolar. Um, there's going to be, you know, I might feel really, you know, if I'm a, really accessing and experiencing the positive quality I built, that might felt, feel really great, but it's gonna be really easy to flip into the other and go back and forth. So it's, so in, an, in beginning to play with this, choose some quality that feels like, like if somebody asks you if you have it, the answer is just, uh, I don't know, or just sort of like draws a blank kind of, um, <laughs> and it's a quality that you would like to have and well, that about, way mark mark how about things that you have that you'd like to have a little more like like i'd like to be kinder or i'd like to be yeah. you know, more of that, something yeah for that's another great one and for those you can um yeah you can just notice what your experience is of being kind thus far and if it's in a different location than your positive template shift that over into the same template mm -hmm. And then the second step would be to find more examples from your life and, and add those into the file or add those into the template. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So either those ones that you want to be more of or those qualities that you, um, that you just kind of draw a blank and it's like, gosh, I don't know if I'm lovable, but I'm, I'm, I'm not unlovable, but I just, just kind of doesn't register. Yeah. So Mark, if you don't mind, let me deconstruct that in a slightly different way. If a client comes in and yeah. says, I want, I need more confidence to be a public speaker. You yeah. might immediately go to what is an attribute that you do have? Um, is that I, a, let's see. Um, so, 
Well, I think it's a slightly different question if a client comes in than what I'm inviting all of you to do. Because likely if a client's coming in and asking for something, it's, it's, the odds are greater, I think, that they're going to already have some negative uh, self-concept, if we're going to work in a self-concept way. Um, but yeah, I would want to gather a little bit more information and um, find out with that person, do you have a sense of being a bad public speaker or is it just like sort of a, gosh, I've never done this before and I want to go into it feeling like I have the, the resources to do this. And if it's the second one, then, then that would very much fall into the category of something to do with what you know now. Um, and if it's the first one, then there's, there's much more in the book about how to first transform any negative sense of self um, and then create a positive, uh, a positive integrated version. Yeah. Thank you for sharing how that's different as we're working with this on ourselves, how that's different from taking that on to the next level of working with clients with that. Great. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. So I encourage you to, to explore this with yourself and um, you know, as far as with clients go, you could always just ask them, you know, it may not be something that they are asking for, um, like their number one issue is usually going to be a little bit more compli complicated than um, just what I've shared, shared thus far. Um, but you might, you might ask them or you might say, you know, we've got like 30 minutes and I'm curious, is there something that you, is there a quality that you would like to have more of or is it a quality that you would like to have for yourself that's positive that you feel like um, it just sort of draws a blank when, when someone asks you if you have that. That could be a really valuable thing to offer someone um, and show them how, how they can do this. Also, when you're talking about confidence, um, confidence about what? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, if it's confidence about something that you're not very good at, <laughs> that's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and that's something that my dad uh, would talk about a lot too, is, is that often, because confidence is one of those things that comes up a lot and a lot of people want confidence. And he would often make an important distinction that I've really valued um, is that whenever a, a client asks me about confidence, um, most of the time people are asking for competence when they want co confidence. And so I ask them, First, is this something that you feel comp competent in or not? So a, a subsection of people go, yeah, I'm totally competent in it. I just freeze up and you know, I don't have the confidence. Um, then that's a very different situation from somebody who is going, well, no, I've never even done it before. I don't know where to begin. And, um, and then there might, it might be valuable to do some skill building in addition to um, giving them the, the resourceful states and accessing and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Mark, with regard to that, don't we all know, don't we all know somebody who has a whole lot more confidence than their competence warrants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and maybe not so much com confidence actually. Um, the, it's like, depending on your definition of confidence, like a common, uh, thing my dad I'd often hear him say is like nobody says I want to be able to open doors confidently <laughs> you know um, but everybody knows that they can open a door so so true confidence is actually it's it's really nothing all that exciting <laughs> right. somebody who's truly confident just does it right. um, you know just like all of us when we open a door that's true confidence so the a lot of a lot of people get taken in with overconfidence and, are, and get convinced that that it actually equals confidence um, but I think um, hopefully we can clue people in that that's that's something else actually and um, maybe not get suckered into into believing it as much that so, was really lovely thank you for that oh you're welcome thank you. <laughs> that was really nice <laughs> I love the door, the door analogy a lot, a lot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
I will never struggle with drawers again. <laughs> you all have so much more confidence than you realize. So now you can all add opening doors into that category and make sure to have it in that positive template format. And think of all the other things you can add into that too. Reaching for glasses and <laughs> writing and yeah, waking up in the morning. And <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Great. Um, yeah, I was working with somebody just yesterday, actually. It was, it was a pretty, it, we were doing this, this type of work and it was a pretty fun one because um, we were actually transforming. He had a, 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 a negative self-concept of feeling like he didn't deserve, uh, like he wasn't deserving. And I pointed out to him that he 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 doesn't actually deserve any any of what he's he's gotten, mm -hmm. um, uh, unless it's a very specific area of a contract with some other human being where they've agreed on certain things. Then, in that case, like if it's a, you know, I do this work and you pay me this and this or whatever, then that's something that he does deserve because that's that was an agreement. But as far as all the other stuff, he doesn't actually deserve any of it. Um, but he doesn't not deserve it either. It's just sort of irrelevant to the, to the situation. And he really liked that. And so he actually, with that one, um, he, he kept the, he, he moved it into the, the position of his positive template. Um, but he actually kept the category the same. It just became a positive thing now that he didn't deserve anything. Um, because, now he instead of feeling entitled most of the time and just disappointed when he didn't get what he deserved now he could actually really feel gratitude uh, for all of this wealth of experience that he didn't deserve any of it but he could still have it and enjoy it and then you know if something didn't go the way that he he wanted um then it it made that a lot easier to deal with too and that's something that i very much learned from I think both my parents but especially uh, from my father that that's been really valuable to me too in in appreciation and appreciating life um, but that was a really fun one because the we didn't actually need to change anything in the category it, it just we just moved it over here and realized like hey you thought this was a negative quality this is actually a positive quality <laughs> uh, you don't deserve any of it um, that just popped into my brain because it was a, Lovely. a another kind of um, reframing the meaning of, of what it is to deserve something or not deserve something. Cool. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, so in I'll just share really briefly. This is like tiny, tiny cliff notes in in terms of. Um, what we can do when we do have a negative quality uh, to just to give you a, a sense of where where you can go with this and I would certainly advise getting the book or, or the online program um, that I can share a link to in a moment to to really have the ins and outs and, and all of the elements of this to pay attention to uh, when you're transforming a negative quality into a positive one but basically let's say I have um, it's not just that I have an ambiguous sense of, or, or, or no sense of equality that I would like to have, but it's that I actually feel like I'm the opposite. So I would like to be kind, but I actually feel like I'm a cruel person. And I have this whole database of examples and it's over here and I can see all the times when I was cruel or whatever it is. Um, now, what do we do with that? So what we can do is with whatever your hypnosis or NLP tools may be, we can go in and access a, a prototype experience from that category. You know, like maybe it's the worst, worst example or the, the most cruel example from the whole, the whole from all of the ones I, I think about. And go in and use whatever change technique you have, whether it's re-imprinting or you know, adding in resources of some, in some way or doing core transformation or, um, you know, there's endless tools you can use to, to 
to transform that experience into an experience of kindness. And then you can allow that, instead of just doing change work with that one situation and hoping that it generalizes, as often as the case with a lot of the processes that uh, are taught in, in, in practitioner or master practitioner or, or in other courses, this is a way of being much more thorough and ensuring that this actually does generalize to the whole, qual to whole, whole category and shift this as a new quality of myself. Um, so it leaves a lot less up to chance, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. So, so that we have that full, you know, once we've transformed that one memory, we can allow that to just kind of ripple out and spread through the whole category, transform that whole category, and then identify that in some way so that our unconscious knows that that's um, a transformed experience. And those transformed experiences can be even more powerful than if it had gone the way we had hoped the first time, because not only is it an example to our unconscious of the way that we want to be, it's also an example of our ability to learn a new way of being. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty awesome thing. So then once that tran that's transformed in that way, then we can shift it over into wherever our positive template is and go from there and add in other examples of, of having, um, kindness or whatever the, the quality is that we want to be. And now we can have it in a way that's congruent and um, that's not going to create sort of a bipolar experience. Um, so that's just a like tiny, tiny preview of the in-depth, you know, there's much more to it and in, in terms of checking lots of different elements. And um, there's a lot more in terms of specific elements to elicit and notice in, in what creates the positive template and um, how to add in different perceptual positions and different past and future to make these positive qualities even more uh, robust. You know, like Michael was saying, for situations where we feel we want more of, a, of an experience. Um, in my dad's uh, explorations with this and, and mine as well, even people who had a really strong sense of self have always found that there was something valuable that they could shift in terms of their inner self-concept to have an even more full experience of the quality. Um, so you can use these things to enhance those qualities of yourself that you already feel well connected to as well. Um, and then another, just in terms of ecology, important thing to be paying attention to is whenever you're making these changes, you know, to check ahead of time and afterwards on the inside and just, you know, just ask on the inside, is there any part of me that has any objection to having this new quality or to having this quality enhanced in this way? And then just noticing what happens in your experience. If there's anything, you know, that comes up as an objection or if you notice, oh gosh, this quality might, it might actually kind of clash with this other quality a little bit and making, making those adjustments so that whatever changes you've made are going to be congruent and eco ecological with um, all of the different aspects of your life. Um, sometimes if, if, if there is an objection that comes up, what you can do is specify the quality a little bit more, more, um, so because we're working with, with these large categories, it's, it's much more likely that objections will come up because um, we're working with these large level categories that, that operate on across lots of different aspects of our lives. So that can make it really powerful transformation that has these ripple out effects in all these different areas. It also means it's more important to pay attention to ecology and make sure that those ripple out effects are going to um, actually all be positive and and if not to make adjustments or maybe contextualize the quality so that it's um, kindness in a particular place at, at the or at the home or something like that if maybe you live on the on in a really rough part of town and kindness isn't a good quality to have when you step outside the door um, or whatever it might be so, yeah, well, with that, I think 
I think uh, that's all that I wanted to be sure to say. And uh, if anyone else has any other questions or thoughts, I want to be sure to give you the link um, to where you can get the, the three-day program if you're interested. It's something that um, we just put online last year um, that's of my father teaching probably about, um, I don't know if it was 15 years ago or something, but teaching this full, full course. Um, is there maybe a place I can ch chat that in there? Or? You can put it in the chat room or I can. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just type it right in there and anyone can ask a, uh, any that question. Come up on the replay as well, Mark, so. Okay, great. The chat thing will? Yeah, it will. Okay. Michael, you are muted if you were trying to talk to us. It looks to me like you're oh, there. I was trying to talk to you, but I was just <laughs> going to start using my hands in a minute. <laughs> So well, that was lovely stuff, Mark, I, and, and uh, it, it was kind of cool. I, I, uh, I had a, a weird thing that, I, that I'd not seen before in terms of submodalities, and that was that for me, there was a, a, a row of images kind of stretching back through time, progressively smaller as they moved off into the distance. And yet the, the very first image in the sequence was more of a... Uh, I, I would say symbol, but it was even so abstract, I knew what it was about. Mm. Uh, and, and the other, the images that were behind it were just progressively sort of smaller versions of the same image, almost like looking in a mirror, in a mirror, in a mirror, mm. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. makes sense, yeah. uh, going off into, the, uh, off into the distance. So that was, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, one of the things that I think is, is really fun with this is that people organize their positive templates in all sorts of different ways. And it's just endlessly um, interesting to me to just find out what, what ways people uh, do this on the inside. And, and there are so many different ways that, that work well and what works really well for one person might not be a fit for somebody else, but it's always fun to just see how, how this inner experience is organized. By the way, what I really I like about this, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Yeah. No. Yeah. Go ahead. As I was doing the process or listening to you, I suddenly was thinking of rehearsing events, you know, when you're trying to um, learn a new behavior or, you know, just do something. And so that you're encouraged to, in your mind, rehearse it, right? You, you have the resource. You re so it seemed to me like this, it, it just it popped in that this is, a good thing to do to get into that um what do you call it here <laughs> your you know, whatever um a template right your template um and access that and and that all that comes up with that and and then go ahead and do the rehearsal i mean is that part of it or has nothing to do with your program it very much has to do with it so if if so i think what you're referring to is like um, any given NLP process, um, often once you have the new state or the new resources, whatever it is, you're asked to rehearse it a couple times in the past, you know, yeah. about a few future situations. That's basically a, um, a less thorough way of doing what we're doing here. So that's, that's a way of hoping that that, that will then generalize as, yeah. a, uh, as a, a new way of being in those in the, in that category of situation that context of, of situations and so with the self-concept work we're being more thorough and actually allowing it to generalize into all of those different situations okay. of the category yeah thanks for the question i think it's a really nice example of how um in a lot of ways this transforming yourself model is kind of bringing together a lot of the NLP tools that are taught as, as kind of separate different techniques in, in trainings and kind of bringing it more together into a, more of a complete understanding of how our inner world works and how we make these general, generalizations and um, how to make sure that those changes generalize in a way that's gonna be useful and not gonna conflict with other positive values. Yeah, good. Yeah. Donald, did you want to 
uh, add something, say something, or ask a question? Well, just just the variety of uh, of of uh, templates it can be really interesting. Um, I've had clients. Oh, it's a tree, and the different instances of being whatever kind are hanging, you know, from the tree. Or I think some. I've had people say it's a vault in the back of my head, and there are all these little slots in the vault. And, uh, it can get quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's their metaphor. They get to do anything they want to with it. <laughs> well, you know, Mark, you, you just said something that was that was just so uh, so lovely in its simplicity because. Uh, for, we, the, the folks that are on this uh, on this call or on this conference have uh, varying degrees of experience with NLP. <clears throat> some of them maybe none at all, and uh, you know, and some of them you know perhaps quite a bit. <clears throat> but uh, you know, officially, uh, people talk about NLP as the study of the structure of subjective experience, which is really a mouthful. Uh, you actually described it as uh, uh, how did you say a minute ago uh, how people organize their their internal life. Uh-huh. Something like that. <laughs> oh, I can understand that. Uh, uh -huh. It's not worth quite as many points on the Scrabble board, but it's, uh, <laughs> but it's a whole lot clearer. Uh, yes. and, and that there is, in fact, uh, this is behind all of it, is that there is this internal structure, and we all, we all sort of organize things differently internally. And this particular technique is really about, let's, let's take a look at how you do that uh, and utilize that information then to, uh, to bring about a change. So yeah. lovely presentation. I'm gonna mention also uh, Damon Cart, who is the one person who is teaching this right now. Uh, so I also just sent that in the chat. So if you wanna, if you want to do more than, uh, if you wanna do a training that involves um, online, uh, a Facebook group, discussion group, and regular um, question and answer with Damon. He's excellent and he studied with my dad and um, is, he's, he's created his, uh, a version of this training that's him teaching this, this model in a really in-depth depth way and it's what he focuses on and it's a really good training um, and has the benefit of um, getting to have an interactive group that are, that's all doing it together and question and answer and that kind of thing. So. <clears throat> and as long as you've mentioned Damon, I might uh, I might mention to, uh, to other folks on the call that earlier today I was looking for some things. My one of, one of my favorite uh, pieces with regard to your to your father is uh, the interview that he did with uh, Antonio Perez. Uh, I, I, I guess I get such an incredible kick out of him because it was it was very clear to me that your dad knew what he was going to talk about uh, and that Antonio didn't really have any idea. He was quite inexperienced at the time and uh, and so gracefully, lovingly, and humorously, uh, you know, your, your dad took him for quite a ride. So, so that's a lot of fun to look at and something that I remember. But I saw tonight that, uh, that Damon did two session, or it's, on, it's two videos, uh, a two-part interview with your dad, uh, apparently quite recently. Yeah, uh, yeah, he came out and visited um, in this, this spring. Yeah. Uh, and was there and and interviewed both my parents and it's up on youtube or his Great. website i didn't get a chance to really look at the whole thing yet but uh but i looked at some select moments of it and it looked like a wonderful thing that i'd like to get back to so uh so yeah damon damon cart it's probably the uh the website for nlp gym or the uh or the uh, yeah. youtube group for nlp gym is he has a nlp gym youtube channel that it will be on yeah yeah cool. mark is is there a an online group for the awareness process? Um, thus far, there is not. That's the, the um, coming to wholeness work. Or the wholeness. Yes, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I love it all. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But I was thinking for myself, I don't have the opportunity to do it as often as I would like, either myself or with clients. So um, it's something I would love to do more of. And if, if there are people that would be interested, you know, in just doing it, um, I would love that. Yeah. Um, Coming to wholeness. Yeah, Rory's interested. <laughs> um, oh, okay. You could start your, I'd encourage you to start your own 
Yeah. All right. And well, maybe you. there will be others that form. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm at least not aware of anyone who's who started one. And maybe there's a Facebook mention. group. We might have a Facebook group, but it's not too active. But there are people in there. Okay, oh, great. So maybe, um, do you have info on the Facebook? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, but I. Uh, maybe well, can I we put that in the chat as well? Yeah. Rory, do you have? Is a, it just coming to wholeness and Facebook? Yes, it's yeah. um, it's a German group, but I know there's more people adding to it. Uh huh. So there's just there's a group called Wholeness Work. Okay. And you'll see uh, Connie Ray's in it. I'm I'm in it. Um, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. International. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Rory. All right. Well, our time is uh, is coming to a close. I'm afraid, Mark and and. Uh, it was a, it was a lovely exercise. We really we really appreciate that, and of course your your entire presentation. May I just ask what quick Joe? Did you have a quick question? I thought I saw you wave your hand. Maybe not. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm okay. Okay. And I'm just seeing that my wife reminded me to to tell you all that I'm teaching metaphors uh, in January in Boulder. If you want to come to Boulder. Oh, lovely. I always forget to tell people what I do, what I'm doing next, so. <laughs> is, that, is that also information available on your website? Um, it is, yeah. Great. MarkAndreas.com. MarkAndreas.com. And, and by the way, uh, while we're putting things in the chat room, I would point out for those of you, I'm not going to close the screen right away, but uh, the chat room does not end up connected to the recording. Uh, oh, so, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Mark, so, are you, so, you going to be in Daytona? Uh, in May? I won't be. That's going to be shortly after the birth of my first son, so I'm just... Oh. <laughs> That's wonderful. My first baby. Congratulations, yeah. Mark. <laughs> first, first, yeah, right. first, first human. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure a lot of you will have a great time there. <laughs> So again, Mark, thanks for spending the evening with us and, and, and sharing this, uh, this lovely work. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, of course, sympathies on the loss of your father and, uh, and of course, uh, love from all of us. Uh, and uh, and uh, in Steve's honor and memory, uh, I, I, I've got to say it again, I don't think that the world would even know about uh, neurolinguistic programming if it weren't for Steve Andreas. So, uh, uh, so we owe him such an incredible debt, and uh, and I think the best thing that we can do about that is uh, is really take to heart the, uh, the the many contributions that he made and take them out into the world and make a difference. Thank you, Michael, and thanks so much for for having me. It's always a pleasure to share fun stuff with other other engaged people. So, okay. thank you, Mark. It was great. <laughs> we really thanks, appreciate Mark. it. Yeah. So now we are going to open up all the microphones. This is our usual thing that we do at the end here. We are unmuting the microphones and in a great cacophony of love and affection, we will all be able to say good night and uh, Godspeed to Mark Andreas and to one another. So uh, good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Night. Michael and Karen. Good night. Good, good to see everybody. We'll see you next month with uh, Thank you, Mark. Andrews. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.